welcome back. I hope all of you have been doing well. So today I wanted to talk about something a little interesting because uh, is it, I, well, I stumbled across an article a few days ago and it kind of got me thinking and I just kind of wanted to share it with some of you because I found it pretty fascinating. And so uh, I thought, why not share it, right? So uh, we've all heard about how Santa Muerte is a one of the growing, one of the fastest growing spiritual movements in the world. Although we only really hear her being discussed in relation to the United States and Mexico and a few little places in South America and rarely in the Philippines. But I've had people reach out to me on my YouTube channel, on Etsy, on Instagram, telling me that they are devotees of La Santa Muerte but they live in New Zealand, they live in England, they live in Asia, they live in China. And I just think that, you know, it's really fascinating when we really sit down and think about how global she really is. We always hear about all these, you know, these politics and these kind of gatekeeping and the kind of really strong traditionalism and really hardcore kind of patriotic feelings and sentiments that some people, well, people in Mexico mostly, who have towards La Santa Muerte and the Mexican people. But in spite of that, we continue to hear about how people in other countries are also devotees. You know, like I said, she has a very huge following in the Philippines. The Philippines is not even Hispanic, it's Asia, right? And I think that it's just really fascinating when you really think about it. And although I've heard many times that um, she's become a fast growing global phenomenon, and even though she's a fast growing global phenomenon, I don't usually get to see it for myself. And the other day I did actually stumble across an article, I think it's published by a Russian newspaper called the Kiev Post. And I just think it's so funny because Right now, I am teaching myself how to speak Russian, and it's, I know what a lot of words mean, I can read it and write it, um, but I can't speak to save my life. And um, what I was hoping was that eventually, if my Russian became good enough, that maybe I could make some content in that language so that I could reach a more global audience. And same thing with speaking Spanish, you know, I'm sure that the videos I make the content I share and my personal perspective and personal gnosis, I think that it's stuff that people don't usually ever hear, both in the speaking world and in the English speaking world and in the Spanish speaking world. I like to think that some of the things I bring forth and that I share online are kind of unique to just me, I think, regardless of the language. So I do hope eventually to make some content in Spanish and potentially some in Russian. And maybe if I learn more languages than that, I was trying to learn Hebrew, um, but I took a break from that just to focus on Russian. And probably eventually I might learn one of the Chinese languages, probably Mandarin, but I'm not sure yet. I know it's one of the most like spoken languages in the world. So for me, it makes sense. Anyway, that was a little bit of a tangent, I guess, but uh, I just uh, I stumbled upon this article by a Russian newspaper called the Kiev Post, or I guess I don't know if it's a newspaper, it's a, a website, like a news website, and it was an article discussing the devotees who are live in Russia who are basically basically worshiping La Santa Muerte, and I just found it so fascinating and really interesting. They interviewed one of the guys and he was basically saying that the people over there in Ukraine have been worshiping La Santa Muerte and they are feeling like she's very much for them. I have the article pulled up right here on my laptop and I'm going to read to you a little bit of what it says. So the article states that despite the bad rap being associated with cartels, Ukrainian followers express that they are more drawn to it because of the power of the figure allegedly to not do the nefarious rather the good things. So they're basically attracted to all the good she can do, not so much worried about the bad things that people associate her with. It says, Andrew Shelikin, a devotee from Kharkiv, says that his devotion is personal 
and that how people adore the saint varies from person to person. However, he rejects a violent connection with the holy skeleton, saying that she is not responsible for war, violence, and so on. I think, I just think it's really interesting, and I only hope to come across more articles like this in the future. He says, in my appeals and prayers, of course, I ask for peace, life, and development of Ukraine, and as an integral and democratic state, what Russia is doing, as well as all of the authoritarian regimes, it's not all acceptable in 21st century. It says here, Ukraine's rising devotion seems to be a regional trend as Poland has an increasing number of Santa Martha followers, says Andrew Chestnut in his recent book, Devoted to Death, Santa Martha the Skeleton Saint. And he says that he came out with a Polish edition to meet the high demand and knowing more about her. At the bottom of the article, it says that the Mexican skeleton saint has become more well-known in Ukraine. Kiev and Odessa both have had cafes named Santa Muerte, and an online search for goods and literature on her is available in Ukrainian and Russian. And there was a recent, in 2019, Santa Muerte Carnival in Kiev. So that's what the article says. I will put a link to the article in the description of this video if you want to read it for yourself. I didn't read the whole thing. I just read a few little pieces of it, I guess. And then there was, uh, from the article, it kind of got me looking around on other social media. And I was able to find a, a Russian Facebook page, which is, I guess, is a group to support people who are devotees in Russia or who speak the Russian language. And there was a lot of like posts about it. And one of the posts, I was able to translate it into English, so I'm going to share with you what it says in that Russian Facebook group about La Santa Muerte. I think the name of the Facebook group is Santa Muerte in Ukraine. It says, uh, and this is just a rough translation, why is Santa Muerte in Ukraine? You know, this was a question I asked in the past years, and recently with the prayer for protection, some people unfollowed. We are not a sect and we are not forcefully keeping anyone here. But in this post, I wanted to clarify everything. Our tradition has no racial territories or boundaries. There are of course the patriotic faithful from Mexico who think otherwise, but if that was true, then there wouldn't be so many faithful for her, faithful people to her that follow her all over the world. We are all united by loving her and thanking her for all that she does for us and for what she teaches us. We are the first community dedicated to our goddess La Santa Muerte in Ukraine. We created these resources over the last 17 to 18 years in honor of the Holy One. First of all, for the faithful in Ukraine, so that we can get to know each other and get all the necessary information, hold meetings and lectures, support each other, purchase things for our altars, and introduce others to our beautiful tradition. But we are not limited only by our country, among our subscribers as there are many faithful from other countries as well. As I said before, we are all one big family by our faith. Everyone has their own opinion, but in the space of our groups, we prohibit, you know, breeding rivalry and problems. And we remind you that we do not promote violence, killing or other things. We do not call for international or interreligious differences into play. We are not a sect or movement, and we call for respect here and for respect to each other because sooner or later we all find ourselves, regardless of who we are, in her arms. P.S. The most important thing I want to say is that we have no competitors. For all those out here who come up with stuff and try to compete with us, what is competition in the tradition of Santa Muerte? Our task is to spread knowledge about her and her faith, and you can leave your competitions on the playground. With love to her, and with respect to her, faithfully. And this was translated from Russian. So uh, it's all really uh, fascinating. And I think that just the, I think a few days after seeing this, I recently saw on Instagram, a few devotees who post content both in Russian and in English. And these are people who live in Russia or neighboring countries. And I think it's just really, really interesting to see the global impact that social media in regards to Santa Muerte has had on the world at large. I think that there are so many more people discovering a Santa Muerte every day. And I think that for better or for worse, you know, people from more walks of life and from more different, you know, ethnic and religious backgrounds are finding their way into this 
you know, religious path, right? Or this spiritual path, I guess I should say, since Santa Muerte is not really a religion, although it could be considered a religious movement by some people. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, what I really wanted to kind of share with all of you. And uh, I just find it really interesting and fascinating to hear, you know, what devotees who are kind of cultivating, you know, a community in other countries have to say. When I went on Instagram, I was able to see that there are devotees who speak the Russian language and they post content for one another. They translate content into their languages for one another. They are trying to find content and they're always looking for new content in their languages. And I just find it really interesting because of the people, I've heard of people in other countries doing this too. And I don't usually get to see it for myself or hear about it in this manner. So it's really fascinating. It's really interesting more than anything to see just how much of a global reach that La Santa Muerte has. And just to really hear, you know, beautiful accounts of what La Santa Muerte has done for devotees of other backgrounds and for devotees all across the globe. So I guess whenever I see her holding that globe in her hand, I guess I kind of feel like she really does have a, a bigger impact and bigger reach than I think some people might even realize. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, but uh, I hope I gave you something to think about. So uh, follow me on Instagram if you don't already, I'm posting a lot over there. And uh, thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe if you're interested in more like this, and I will see all of you in the next one. Take care.